we have Mark Lindsay from Experian um, and Eleanor Marshall from Group M Nexus. And they're chaired by Martin O'Boyle from MGO Consulting. So I'd like to welcome them all to the stage. So thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we've had some really good sessions talking specifically about measurement and AI. We're going to talk in this session more about uh, how we activate and how we use data for um, targeting. So uh, we're going to look at the question of mass reach versus uh, audience targeting and what's more effective and how effective is targeting actually for advertisers. So I've got two brilliant experts uh, who Sam's already introduced, Ellie and Mark from uh, Group M Nexus and Experian. Um, so I'm just going to jump straight in. Um, this question of targeting versus mass reach has been around for ages in that age-old debate with the likes of Byron Sharp so it's talking about how if you target, you're going to restrict your ability to reach some future and current uh, consumers. Um, so do you, s in your companies, do you still see these debates being put forward? Do you see these with your clients at Group M? Sure. I think what we see now necessarily isn't a binary question of do I target or do I scale. It's much more nuanced than that now. And basically what clients want to be able to achieve is a data-driven way of having a smart and scalable execution. And that revolves around quite a few different themes. So obviously around first party data, the ability to onboard, to plan and to activate across media channels, but also what the role of enrichment and insight is in being able to augment that. And that could be based on proprietary in-house data, it could be based on third party partnerships, what's sort of like the unique elements or the scalable elements that can add more intelligence to it. Um, but I think there's also, again, it's not kind of like a rigid approach to buying a segment or buying scale, but we're finding clients are much more um, sort of like customized and dynamic in the way that they think about media execution. So it's not sort of like one or the other, but I, th I think a much more kind of diverse approach, a more fluid approach, but also a smarter approach to it. And do you see the same, Mark, in people coming to you? Yeah, yeah. I think, um, you know, when considering um, targeting and considering segments, then um, quite often people uh, tend to go towards the, the view that it's all about demographics and, and a, a sort of a blunt instrument um, looking at Gen Z or, or a particular age demographic. Um, when in fact, in, in, in audience segments, there's so much more sophistication than that. Um, and the reality is, um, show me a brand that has enough budget to you know, market to everybody across every channel. Um, unfortunately, we just don't have that sort of budget available to us. So targeting by definition is a, is a critical tool. Um, oh. And as uh, Ellie said, you know, it's that combination and, and being smart in terms of how you use the available capabilities of both the channels and the data combined to get the right result. And do you still see clients looking for this sort of spray and pray mass approach where they just want to target everyone. I mean, could you just delve deeper on how you would go into approaching that with the client? Sure. I don't think anyone has a sort of spray and pray approach anymore. I think you can still have a very high reach campaign and be data driven and smart at the same time. I think the way that we'd approach that would be with any campaign is what's, what's the objective and what's the why? and then really work back from there. So is it around sort of like brand reach? Is it around purchase? Is it something in between? And that really helps define what the channel mix is, not just the audiences, but channel and creative as well. Um, so that could be a combination of the kind of the big broadcast things with the more tactical as well. But again, it's just kind of going back to what do you want to achieve? Why do you want to reach everybody? Is it possible to, is it useful to, and does that define the, the, the objective? So it's a sort of a combination of looking at, um, to Mark's point about budget and what's realistic, but also what's actually going to fulfill the aims of a campaign. Cool. And so you mentioned things such as third party data and using that and you know, generating insights, not just the activation. Um, what there's been a sort of a lot of a down on third party data over the last few years, particularly with the deprecation of cookies. Is third party data still relevant today? Or do advertisers need some sort of level of third party data to, uh, to really sort of build the most effective targeting plan? Yeah. 
Not sure if you want to start on this I, one. For I might have an opinion on this, <laughs> perhaps. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that first party data um, uh, has tremendous value and uh, clearly many brands, many organizations uh, investing time and effort on pulling together first party data. However, first party data does have its challenges. Frequently, there's not enough of it. And, and um, when you're looking for scale, uh, then uh, the size and availability of first party data um, is often a restriction. Secondly, first party data only really tells you about the people that have already engaged with you and have already trusted you with their data. Um, so there's a skew in that. Um, and then the, and the third bit is, um, in today's regulated environment, uh, then have you collected that data with sufficient transparency and permissions, et cetera, um, to use the data in the way that you want? So taking all of those into consideration, then third-party data can really um, address that. So third-party data typically has scale. It will typically talk about the whole marketplace, your customers, your prospects, and beyond. Um, also, uh, you know, third-party data um, uh, can, can, be, can be absolutely, typically because it is collected by organizations that specialize in it, uh, will be collected with the right transparency and, and uh, diligence against that. So um, you know, we're definitely saying third party play a, a, a really important role. Um, and also because of the theme of this is data and measurement. One of the nice things about um, third party data is it can play a role not just on activation, but also in the planning and the measurement so the full uh, life cycle of your campaigns. Excellent. And so basically a mix is ideal, ultimately. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and in reality, doesn't this only really affect digital channels? I mean, it, there, there's lots of uh, first and third party data available on uh, digital channels. How do we amplify this to be able to move into more traditional media such as TV and the other, um, the other dinosaurs? Sure, I think it's definitely relevant across all channels. And there isn't really an absolute split between traditional and digital anymore. You think about TV, audio, outdoor, print. Everyone has a, a digital version and a traditional version as well. So the main sort of challenge here or ask here is to think about how to apply first party person level data across other channels in a way that are uh, reflective of the way in which they're activated against. And that's something that both the, within Experian but also within Nexus as well, is where we're really focusing on geography and geo keys as a way for activating data. Not only does it kind of give uh, an identifier that's relevant across all channels, it's also a very privacy first way of reaching audiences. It's scalable and it sort of manages that balance between still um, reaching audiences and being data driven and people first, but being reflective of the way in which that media is delivered. And do you see, from your point of view at Experian, do you see clever activations that sort of enable um, traditional channels as well? Yeah, ab absolutely. I, I, I love the concept that maybe using third party data and audiences uh, came from the world of digital, but um, uh, <laughs> it, it might have it predated it a little bit. And sometimes we forget what we already knew about the skill of, of using data for, for audience targeting. Um, but to Ellie's point, uh, absolutely, um, one of the almost advantages of the depletion of third-party cookies is that organizations are recognizing um, that data sets can be used across channels so that you can use the same data set in different channels and get that consistency, which of course helps your planning, but it also helps your measurement as well. Um, and just to give, a, you know, to give, a, give an example, um, you know, in, in the financial services world, um, uh, with the regulation, consumer duty, and things like that, then um, uh, you don't always want to promote your product to everybody. Um, you're actually required to control who you promote and who you advertise to, um, getting the right product promoted to the right individual. So you can create with third-party data, um, and we work with organizations, to actually suppress audiences that wouldn't be appropriate for a given product and for a given, given service, and then apply that across all channels. So um, yeah, we're seeing real benefits of, of that cross-channel um, approach. 
And obviously, with, uh, within certain media, as they become more digital, we see um, lots of opportunities, such as addressable TV, which will be a huge part for yourselves at Nexus. Um, do you see other, I'm, I'm still banging on about this traditional media piece, but do you see other opportunities which you feel are underutilised at the moment? Within the, the within data space or the, the within channel space? Within the channel space, where we could probably, where there probably are opportunities to utilise uh, these data solutions. Yeah, absolutely. I think across um, addressable TV, across outdoor and audio, everything that is kind of, uh, uh, is related to, to space and time when it comes to consumer um, uh, consumption. I think are, are really key opportunities. And again, kind of like speaking to the, the reasons in which you use those channels, it's very much kind of like in a, in a broadcast way, it's a creative way as well. So again, it ties with the being able to have a, a scalable campaign that's sort of like the one to few, the one to many approach that isn't necessarily down the hyper personalization route, um, that you're able to have creative messaging that's relevant to that channel while also being able to use um, geo-based, third-party-based ways of actually being targeted in that delivery. Great. I mean, look, so there's, there's a lot of opportunity there, Do you, and we probably need to utilise it more. Um, bring it back to digital, and you know, that's where you know, there's obviously huge opportunity anyway. Um, the reality is you know, lots of advertisers are not just looking at a local market, looking at multi-market. And digital doesn't really care about borders or anything like that. Um, how do you um, manage that and how can you get to, do you think it's possible to get to an effective regional, multi-regional campaign um, using an audience segment given the fact that there's different laws and different um, abilities to use data in different countries? Probably. Yeah, I, uh, so the great thing is that, that um, we're doing that today and uh, to Ellie's point, um, geo and spatial based data and analysis and insight um, cuts through all of those um, restrictions. So um, in, in, in our side of, um, uh, side of the world and, and working together with, um, with Nexus, um, we've got a data set that we call Worldview that basically gives a consistent analysis of areas across the whole globe. Um, and, and what that, that, that does is it allows organizations to come up with those strategies um, and apply those strategies in you know, any city or any area um, that they choose across, across the globe. So you get that, you know, the key thing there is consistency, but because it's geo-based, um, you're able to cut through the, the regulatory risk constraints that individual countries have. Um, so it, it means that it, it opens up the ability to, to target and to make decisions on a more international basis. And sort of ke but keeping in with the themes that we've seen earlier about you know, measuring and uh, seeing how effective they are, um, I'm assuming obviously this is more effective. Do you, can you give examples where you know, employing these sorts of data strategies are ha, have been more far more effective for. I'm sort of leading you with the question there, aren't I? Sorry. <laughs> yes, it always works. Uh, no, I think the the main thing is is again to tie it back to the reasons why you're using the data, what the objectives were. So things around um, third party data, the experience activations are focused more on sort of the the geo based, the broader audience segments. So again, kind of having measurement that's reflective of that. So did it change sentiment? Did it drive further? Um, engagement or awareness. Um, in a similar way to the utilization of first party and third party in targeting, the same is true of measurement as well. So perhaps we wouldn't try up a purely geo-based targeting approach with did somebody make a single purchase in store. Um, but absolutely when it comes to the, the objectives or the, the reasons for using those media, we can absolutely prove out the, the value of that targeting versus others. Um, it's, it makes a sort of interesting debate about the, the incremental value of having perhaps like the purest first party data or digital data that's very small, not particularly scalable. It might perform the highest, but it's really still quite a small segment that overall that's driven. So it's um, one to sort of weigh up in terms of overall value. Brilliant. We're, d we're down to the last minute now. So um, to finish off, what would be one piece of advice for the brands, advertisers sitting in the room that you would give to them when they're considering their how to target and their targeting strategy? Do you want to go first, Ellie, and then Mark? Sure. I would say um, don't kind of have a, a tunnel vision or exclusive focus on first party data at the expense of everything else. So, a creative execution, media channel mix, 
non-ID related signals like environment, like geography are really valuable as well. So first party data absolutely should be a really high priority in the strategy, but also really broaden it out in the way that it's actually delivered. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. And, and um, yeah, from uh, my point of view, uh, one of the things that we, that we really um, see the benefit of is organizations investing in understanding their customers better. We've heard it a few times on the stage uh, today, um, but data provides a really good way um, to get in to understand your customers as deeply as possible and use that insight to inform everything that you do moving forward. So, um, you know, garbage in, garbage out. If you build your platform based on um, inaccuracies or assumptions, then that's not going to work for you. So really understand your customers first, use data and an uh, analytics to, to do that, and then use that insight when you move forward. Brilliant. Well, our time is up, and it's been flashing for the last minute or so. So um, I'd like to say thank you to Ellie and Mark, um, and enjoy the rest of the session and the rest of the day.